Dr. Deva Brinda, working as an associate professor in the department of Tripoli, Amit University. Uh, today, uh, I am going to teach on the topic, uh, the over voltage generations, causes and control methods for the course high voltage on motion chips. Today, let us discuss on the over voltages in power systems. Under that, we will see the definition of over voltage, causes of over voltage, types of over voltage and then what are the types under that we have small classifications uh, that is going to be the switching over voltage and temperature, tem temporary over voltage then external over voltage. The learning objective is about the generation of over voltage, what are its causes and how to control or mitigate the over voltages. Everyone will be wondering what is over voltage, how it is generated, what are its causes, what are its impact to the power system network. Let us look at the introduction of the over voltage generation, what are its effects, impacts on the power system network. So, we know very well the over voltages are hazardous to the power system uh, network and uh, it, it creates lots of uh, problems into the, uh, the power system network say the generation, transmission and the distribution of the uh, electrical network. We know what is called as the power network, power network is a very big interconnected structure which these high voltages will, uh, will, will produce uh, the impact on the power system equipments say the, uh, uh, say the motors, generators. Uh, alternators, uh, so many devices which is connected into the system and that has to be protected against this over voltage. Everyone will be, uh, first of all you must know what is called as a over voltage. Over voltage is one type of the high voltage uh, which is very hazardous and which creates a voltage stress into the power system. So, according to the electrical safety, the, uh, the electricity rule they define that uh, the high voltages is, uh, we have they are dividing this into three types. One is your high voltage, then we have a medium uh, extra high voltage and then we have your ultra high voltage which is having more than uh, say uh, the high voltage which is lying more than 600 volts which is considered as a high voltage in distribution network. But in case of the tra transmission system, the high voltage value. Uh, according to the safety uh, uh, the rules, it is defined as 66 kV uh, and uh, the medium extra high voltage is going to be uh, uh, around uh, 32 uh, kV and uh, uh, more than uh, 400 kV. So, more than uh, 750 kV comes under the uh, ultra extra high voltage. So, anyway the high, uh, high voltage over voltage or high voltage which creates a lot of impact and uh, to the entire power system and uh, this uh, is a challenging task for the power system engineers. So, we should really see to this problem and uh, we must as an electrical engineers or a power system engineer we must know how to sort out how to mitigate this uh, over voltage. Now, let us know what is called uh, the over voltage definition. Uh, we call the over voltage as the uh, transient or surges or impulses. Uh, this is the technical term we basically use for over voltage. So, this over voltage is, uh, is defined as the, uh, the elevation of the voltage, the normal system voltage above the rated value. So, that is called as an over voltage. So, now see this is the typical waveform of transient surges. So, uh, we know uh, it is shown as the time versus the voltage. So, this is the uh, safer, the green line represents the safer limit and uh, which is going to be the normal system voltage. Suppose say some due to the uh, man made operations or by natural phenomenon, say the uh, natural phenomenon like lightning, uh, what happens there will be an elevation of the over voltage which is generated in the power system network. So, say it can be of any side, it can be of generation, it can be of uh, in the transmission or on the distribution side. So, you can see there is a, a sudden or a sharp rate of rise of over voltage uh, occurred in the uh, power system. So, that is uh, shown as a over voltage with a marked arrow and uh, this uh, over voltage has two parts, one is your wave front and wave tail. 
see you can see the waveform which is going to be very sharp and uh, which has uh, which raises very fastly very rapidly at a rate of uh, say it is 1 to 5 microseconds it's it's going to be in a microsecond speed uh, similarly you can see the uh, the other side say the there is a decay of the over voltage and which is uh, very slow in manner when compared to the wave front so this is called as a wave tail so and it takes a decay of uh, the time duration is going to be 50 microseconds so uh, this is a typical structure of a switching surges or impulses or transients so the mainly the over voltage transients depends upon the uh, duration of the uh, voltage uh, say the persistence uh, uh, say we say it's going to be a permanent transients or temporary transients or it is going to be uh, keeps varying based on the nature of the uh, the uh, man made actions or switching actions done on the power system network next we are going to enter into the types of over voltages because this topic really clearly explains the uh, where the classification of over voltages and how it occurs and what are its natures and what are its impacts into the real power system network say you uh, we know very well that uh, the internal over voltages or surges uh, really increases twice times of the rated voltage the system voltage or the standard voltage so uh, it's it's create a lot of Im a great impact so the very big classification is going to be the first is your internal voltage from the name itself it's very clear that internal is made or created into the system or in the system or in the network say it's called as otherwise called as man made uh, uh, over voltage that is created by the human intervention or human actions so that is we call it as improper uh, working of the devices in the power system then we go ahead with the uh, external over voltage and uh, external from the name it is very clear it is by the natural phenomenon uh, 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 we call it that is going to be the lightning phenomenon because it occurs in the atmosphere. Uh, we know the very I want to stress one differences with the internal and external external is uh, mainly originated in the power system network and whereas the external over voltage is uh, created uh, outside the environment or outside of the network say it is the, uh, the cloud or we say it is going to be the atmosphere. Next let us see the causes or the generation of internal over voltages as I said before these internal over voltages are generated uh, inside the uh, or originated uh, inside the network or the system and it is mainly due to de-energization of the transmission lines, cables or shunt capacitors or capacitor banks and then uh, disconnection of unloaded transformers and shunt reactors. Um, energization or uh, reclosing of circuit breakers or extra high voltage transmission lines, sudden switching of loads, uh, the inductive loads or it may be a, or it can be a capacitive loads, then short circuit falls, say we call it as an unsymmetrical falls or fault clearances during clearing the falls, there may actions, uh, there may occur a internal over voltage, then electrical insulation and isolation failures. So these are all the major causes and very important uh, the concept the phenomenon which often occurs in the power system is going to be your resonance because since our electrical network is non-linear in nature and almost 100 percentage of our network consists of inductors and capacitors say we, we call it as an energy storing elements and uh, that's re, uh, that creates a lot of problems into the transmission system say uh, we uh, we call that by a technical term called ferro resonance uh, and arcing grounds and then we have an another uh, causes too we call it as current chopping uh, which is uh, very uh, 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 very often creates uh, uh, due to the operation of circuit breakers uh, uh, these are all the major causes of internal over voltages this has to be mitigated next let us see a little brief about the uh, types of internal over voltage there is a small classification of internal over voltages one is your switching over voltage otherwise it is called as transient over voltages of high frequency uh, I want to stress some more about the frequency related with over voltage everyone will be thinking about why what is the relativity of voltage with respect to the frequency because we know our uh, system entire system is uh, AC network alternating uh, current system network and uh, the frequency is a major criteria if the frequency uh, uh, is not maintained constant throughout the operation of transmission system uh, the speed of the alternator may increase and there is an imbalance in the network occurs so uh, the entire system may put under collapse uh, collapse conditions or situations so we want to overcome such a things and uh, these are all transients 
uh, which has a high frequency more than 500 kilohertz we call that as a switching over voltage and the next one is going to be a temporary from the name itself it's very clear it's called a st steady state so it's going to be uh, not varying or a transient type like previous case but this is going to be a steady state over voltage of only power frequency what is called as a power frequency power frequency is going to be uh, lying in the range of 50 to 60 hertz say the utility services uh, utility type of domestic loads which uh, works on these uh, types of frequencies and little bit when you go for a higher type of loads the uh, uh, frequency is going to be lying in the range of 300 to 900 hertz so anyhow these has to be taken care and has to be a remedial actions to restore these type of uh, internal over voltages if it is persistence or if the action is not taken it leads to uh, a very dangerous and hazardous situation of the entire power system network and imbalance in the structure may occur look at the shape of switching surges uh, from the name we know very clear it is called switching uh, by the man-made action or switching actions uh, these type of transients or surges are going to be created in the uh, electrical power system uh, actually its characteristics is going to be very peculiar than other type of uh, the waveforms uh, it's going to be basically irregular it doesn't have any proper shape and uh, with high frequency harmonics because since these waves are generated due to uh, man-made actions and uh, which uh, there will be an inducement of high frequency harmonics are injected and it is shapeless and uh, sometimes it could be of oscillatory type or it could be of an unipolar type so this is the you can see here some five types of switching surges uh, because of the different activities performed by the man-made that is the people uh, say the operations of the devices one is the uh, fault clearing due to fault clearing the a represents the fault clearing uh, uh, fault clearing time you can uh, see the per unit value the over voltage is defined in per unit with the time and the time is in milliseconds and uh, uh, you can see there is a quite there is no shape or you can observe the shape of the waveform there is no a particular shape and it keeps in varying and it uh, you can see there is a jerk or a jump or there is a sudden uh, rise in the peak value of the voltage and again it diminishes again it increases so these are all mainly due to the sudden action say fault clearing then fault initization then over voltage of the line end of the fault clearing and then energization of long suppose when we energize uh, energization of transmission line itself is a one type of uh, a sudden action uh, so uh, when you suddenly uh, en energize the extra high volt transmission line there injects your switching surges into the system and that is the d uh, waveform which represents very clearly and the peaky the waveform is a very high peak and uh, there is a, a steep uh, raise and uh, there is a, a lower diminishing in the value and then over, over voltage at line end during so the final waveform that is the e waveform represents the uh, there is a over voltage at a line end uh, that is the end of the transmission system that is we call it as the termination end so where we basically connect the load so you could be, uh, out of all these five we can see there is a, a different patterns so it is not a common pattern it has a shapeless and uh, uh, the patterns keeps varying uh, by actions to actions say with the devices to device to with the process to process as i said before uh, the generation of uh, switching over voltages has many causes and reasons not only depends upon a single reasons because our entire power system is a very big network uh, starting from generation to distribution side uh, we have lot more operations is going to be quite performed uh, uh, by the power system engineers so uh, we will see the first one is going to be the interruption of low inductive currents uh, because we people as a, a engineers uh, what we basically do is we, we forcibly uh, interrupt the current uh, say it's a low inductive current so interruption of low in, uh, uh, current uh, is really by the high speed circuit breakers uh, really a challenging task and that creates a deionizing effects uh, into the power system and that in turn with leads to uh, over voltage generation say we call it as a switching over voltage then comes with the next is uh, uh, the uh, interruption of small capacitive currents not only the inductive uh, type of currents uh, we can also uh, the same uh, things is going to be provided uh, with the small capacitive currents by switching off see the previous case talks about uh, forcibly interrupting but in the second case uh, it's it's all talks about the interruption of uh, the uh, that is switching of the 
uh, unloaded lines so we know very well our transmission line has many loads suppose if it is overloaded we will be in a position to switch off or cut off some of the loads uh, on the transmission line so during such a conditions there occurs uh, uh, the interruption uh, we will be in a situation to interrupt the capacitive currents by switching off the unloaded line so that uh, in turn uh, creates a switching over voltage and then next is going to be your ferro resonance uh, which is uh, really a challenging task and this condition should uh, really to be taken care uh, and it has to be avoided and uh, the next is going to be the energization of long extra high so when we connect the ehv lines that is called as extra high voltage lines or ultra high load lines into the uh, source say the generator uh, it's also a sudden action so that creates a um, over voltage or we call it as a switching over voltage because we are switching into the system we are connecting into the uh, supply uh, so that creates a uh, over voltage then next comes with the resistance switching so we we have very many types of switching into the uh, uh, in the power system say uh, we, we basically go for uh, resistance switchings with the help of circuit breakers so that also injects uh, 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 over voltage into the system then switching lines terminated by transformer suppose if the uh, transmission line is uh, terminated by a transformers uh, we there occurs a there occurs or generation of the over voltages then series cap capacitor we basically use the capacitor for boosting up the reactive power that is we are injecting the reactive power into the system to uh, maintain the balance uh, of the transmission system so that uh, ca series capacitor uh, series capacitor compensator lines uh, which really uh, uh, it's a one of the reasons of uh, generation of uh, uh, over voltages because series capacitor and shunt capacitor is a very vital in case of uh, transmission system because we want to maintain the balance uh, power balance we basically go for it and uh, that leads a uh, generation of over voltage let us see the uh, let us explain uh, what is the uh, interrupt that is by interrupting the low inductive currents what really happens into the system so we know very well see the picture uh, x axis and y axis we have an uh, two part diagrams one the upper part diagram which explains the uh, it is the circuit breaker uh, uh, current say the current arcing current and the circuit breaker and uh, we know very well circuit breaker make or break the circuit under abnormal situations so uh, we know very well current chopping so current chopping is nothing but it's a phenomena which we really uh, or forcibly interrupt the currents that's the low inductive currents uh, when you do like that when we do like that the deionizing effect that is there is a df ionizing effect of the circuit breaker will creates uh, yeah it will creates a current that current is going to be uh, settled down before the natural current occurs zero so see in the picture uh, the natural current zero is uh, clearly mentioned and uh, it is uh, due to the current shopping uh, what happens you are forcing the current to become zero so automatically what happens is the current uh, the low current that is the system uh, voltage that there you can observe there is a a uh, sudden increase in the system voltage in the second diagram but in the first diagram the arcing current say the low inductive currents uh, settles earlier than the natural current becomes zero so during such period you can observe there is a generation of over voltage in the system so this is called system voltage the v represents the system voltage and the upper diagram represents the circuit breaker uh, voltage or we can call it a circuit breaker current say it's called an interrupting currents so this condition will really very dangerous and it has to be uh, uh, surpassed it has to be suppressed what is the ways and means and we know very well a very simple resistor switching you, you can we can incorporate a simple resistor connected in parallel with the circuit breaker we have a circuit breaker contacts along with that we are going to connect one resistance in parallel not in series so by this way the over voltage is getting trapped observed by the additional resistance or external resistance and this is the only possibility and very effective and simple method for suppressing these uh, controlling the uh, current shopping method uh, uh, of generation of over voltage so next is the next is the very important uh, uh, the over voltage generation which has to be taken care and ultimate care has to be uh, known what is the phenomenon behind the behind it and how the ferro resonance is occurred because uh, everyone think about what is ferro resonance and uh, they will uh, quietly confuse with the normal resonance so we have a normal network say 50 hertz system there occurs a resonance and there the resonance is going to be uh, we say we basically say the inductive reactance 
if the circuit inductive reactance is equal to the capacitive reactance then there occurs a resonance but what is called as a ferro resonance this ferro resonance basically occurs in the major system major power system uh, say it's going to be a high voltage system uh, they may say we say a, a extra high voltage transmission line or it can be a high voltage system we can experience uh, this type of ferro resonance so you uh, now uh, see in the look at the picture uh, what is actually it is a, a network it's a it's a transmission system we have a source vs and then the source is connected uh, connected to uh, to a cable to a transformer say this uh, and the secondary part of the transformer is kept open circuited since i didn't connect any load so this is a one small uh, transmission system now uh, the cables both the cables has two switches two control switches one on the uh, the upper face and another one is on the lower face the upper face is s1 cables it is already already it's closed next the the lower cable has an s2 switch which is really open now what happens uh, uh, i am going to see we both the sides uh, we have uh, both upper and lower we have a cable capacitance so cable capacitance is grounded we both are of shunt so shunt type and uh, now what i am going to do i am uh, since the s2 is opened and uh, the secondary of the transformer is not loaded so what happens uh, when under uh, this situation the transformer uh, and capacitance everyone knows its energy storing element it stored some of the electric charges electric charges uh, stored in the inductance in the form of inductance and capacitance now what happens the charges are now transported because since the circuit s2 is open uh, now the charges are now started flowing towards the from the uh, transformer flowing towards the ca capacitor so now the inductor and the capacitance that is the shunt capacitance and the transformer inductance both are come in series so that there observes there creates a resonance phenomenon so due to the combinational circuit so these uh, charges because charges everyone knows it's a current so these creates or injects a current into the system when s2 is closed suppose if so this is a some initial charge on the transmission system suppose we are closing the switch s2 on operation suppose i am going to work the system so i am i will close the switch s2 so already there is a uh, incoming of charges from these uh, uh, systems and when these both the reactances say the transformer inductive reactance and capacitive in capacitive reactance both are equal there will be a generation of high current everyone knows at resonance the current will be very high the current goes or reaches a peak value that current may upon closing will flow in a backward direction and it goes into the uh, the uh, uh, on the input side and it creates uh, over voltage into the system voltage so system voltage is get interrupted and this over voltage will affect whatever the components which is connected into the system so this condition is called as ferro resonance and uh, how to uh, this uh, this has to be overcome so what we can do one method remedial method is we can connect one shunt uh, reactor in parallel to this and we can observe the excess charge on the transmission system so absorbing absorption of this electric charge so because these are all energy storage elements and often uh, it's a challenging task to again a power system engineers so let us see what is the mathematical expression behind the ferro resonance uh, how it varies with the uh, the normal resonance so here ferro resonance is mathematically represented because i said uh, uh, before that uh, the inductive transformer inductive reactance omega l is equal to the capacitive reactance say 1 by omega c so from that we find we try to find out what is the inductance it's l is equal just cross multiplying we get 1 by omega square c where uh, l is variable here but in case of normal resonance circuit say 50 hertz circuit network uh, the l is fixed it's a constant frequency because it's it's only one particular frequency but here l is varying why it is varying because of the uh, the charges which is going to be stored uh, in the transformer is transferred into the uh, capacitance so l is variable in nature so uh, we know this inductance is varying since it's varying in nature and this will inject a, a high current into the circuit so uh, due to high current what happens will cause a over voltage because it's uh, directly proportional so high current really leads to a generation of over voltage and we know every equipment so when these current flows into the equipments connected into the network what happens uh, the v v is called as the over voltage 
so what is how the over voltage how do you how do we calculate the over voltage it is ir into uh, impedance equipment every equipment has the own impedance that impedance has to be multiplied with the ir where ir is the resonance r represents resonance and i represents the uh, the increased current or elevated current that current has to be multiplied with the z equipment uh, where we can get a over voltage so um, so the, the every instrument has to be designed in such a way that the insulation coordination uh, has to be uh, designed properly uh, so that to uh, maintain the uh, to uh, to undertake or to uh, <coughs> accept this over voltage or to bear that over voltage so that's the design purpose we we have to take care so let us see the next uh, uh, classification of switching over voltage the second one is it's also a very peculiar it's called as power frequency over voltage and uh, otherwise called as a temporary over voltage so why it is named as Power temporary over voltage or power frequency because these really happens at only a only one frequency say the uh, 50 hertz to 60 hertz uh, say on the utility services uh, utility means on the distribution side so the previous case what we have felt or all on the transmission network uh, and these type of voltages are going to be phased experienced in the utility services so uh, actually uh, there are also more, so some more reasons I cannot uh, uh, combinedly put together uh, the switching uh, generation causes into the temporary power frequency uh, over voltage causes this is little bit different from the, uh, the previous case. So what is actually is due to sudden uh, operation of load, sudden connection and disconnection of the inductive load or it may be a capacitive load on the distribution side too and then uh, we have a Ferranti effect and then unsymmetrical fault suppose if there is any faults which is occurring on the uh, system say unsymmetrical faults are called as a, a single line to ground fault line to line fault uh, because when there is a uh, we suppose we say it's a three phase system if the any any two phases which will be in contact with each other or one phase with the neutral or one phase with the earth if it is closer or contact then there occurs an unsymmetrical faults then there is an unbalance in the system happens so due to a fault occurring suppose we can if we consider a single line to ground fault uh, if there is any fault occur on the one phase the other two healthy phases may get affected or injected with over voltage and because this is due to the symmetrical fault on the air phase or a, or a one phase so the other healthy phases also may get uh, affected so that has to be taken care and then saturation in transformers so saturation in transformers also a very quite challenging task because almost uh, in distribution side or on the transmission side we go for transformers so uh, when suppose if we are elevating elevating the input voltage uh, more than a rated value we are uh, imposing or applying to the transformers so the we know very well uh, uh, the transformers uh, uh, starts uh, <coughs> increasing its exciting current and that exciting current uh, increases uh, more than a value and that uh, very high value and uh, once reaches a maxima value it uh, undergoes a saturation and with uh, harmonics because harmonics uh, are also injected into the system very high we say very high order harmonics are injected into the system so this is saturation in transforms is also has to be taken care and uh, let us see the first causes for power frequency over voltage one is the sudden load rejection as I said previously suppose we know very well uh, that the entire power system has to work properly or efficiently effectively what as the power system engineers has to do is we have to balance the generation and the load suppose if there is any sudden load uh, uh, suppose if there is any disconnection or there is a decrement or decrease in the load the, the, uh, the uh, generation is getting affected so uh, the generation may increase so we want to ma maintain a balance suppose if there is any cutting out of the loads what happens the speed of the prime over may increase when the speed increases what happens uh, uh, we know the speed is directly proportional to frequency so frequency may increase so as a power system engineer we have a role to maintain the system voltage and the system frequency constant constant at any conditions so if there is any imbalance occurs the entire system may put under uh, uh, collapse and there is a lead to a situation called over voltage and then over voltage will in turn will affect the uh, equipments because so many power system equipments are connected into the network and all this getting affected and because it's all uh, obvious it's all very costliest device and uh, these may undergo failure so uh, uh, this has to be taken care so next reasons is going to be the disconnection of inductive loads and connection of capacitors suppose what we basically do is uh, to because um, there may be because all our power systems are non-linear and inductive type of loads 
So to because loss is also obviously high. So I want to uh, make up the loss, make up the balance. What basically we be, we people will do is we connect a shunt reactors uh, or we call it as a capacitive loads to balance that. So during such a switching operations or a sudden connection leads to power frequency over voltages and these over voltages is going to be pertaining at a one single frequency say for Indian system it is 50 hertz and for other countries it is going to be 60 hertz. But the voltages value is going to be high not like in the case of previous switching over voltages. Switching over voltages the voltage is going to be high also in turn uh, frequency also will be very high say uh, greater than 500 kilohertz. But here the frequency is going to be 50, 50 hertz it is a power frequency but voltage is going to be very high. Next very important challenging uh, causes for temporary over voltages is going to be the Ferranti effect. Uh, we know very well uh, this uh, Ferranti effect uh, uh, mainly occurs in the transmission lines and uh, say it is going to be a, a long transmission lines not in case of short or medium because this is not uh, the impact is not greatly affected. But in case of long transmission is, it has to be taken care. What is actually this is means uh, we know very well that uh, our transmission line is made up of R, L and C resistance, inductance and capacitance. capacitance uh, and we should not leave uh, our transmission system unloaded or lightly loaded. We should never ever operate the transmission system under lightly loaded or no load conditions. Suppose imagine if this happens because of the uh, improper monitoring of the system, uh, I assume that I am lightly loading. What happens? Uh, we have a shunt capacitance, a shunt element which is, uh, which is uh, lightly loaded or open circuited. What happens? There, there is a uh, capacitance is parallel, put under parallel. So, capacitance obvious everyone knows it is a reactive power which uh, starts reacting more amount of reactive power and that reactive power injects uh, uh, high current into the uh, uh, high current is generated due to the uh, generator because capacitor is always a generator. Uh, and we have an inductor which is series with the uh, circuit and uh, re when comparing the two re powers the inductive power is lesser than the, uh, the generated power. So, due to that such a situation uh, there will be a, uh, a generation of high current that high current will impose over voltage across the capacitors. So, uh, uh, we know very well uh, Vr should be should always be equal to Vs that is your receiving end voltage should, should always be equal to the sending end voltage. Now, in this Ferranti due to Ferranti effect the receiving end voltage is uh, more than the sending end voltage. So, this is a very uh, a critical condition uh, to the system. Uh, so, this has to be taken care. So, how to limit this uh, Ferranti effect? So, again by, as I said by connecting one shunt reactor we can uh, uh, inject uh, we can absorb that excess power and by that way we can safely maintain the, um, the input side voltage and the output side voltage uh, equal. Uh, this is the one and very simple way. So, this is the mathematical uh, uh, explanation for the Ferranti effect. So, uh, I have an, uh, um, a, a transmission system say it is called as a long transmission line which has R, L and C. So, uh, this is called as a pi model uh, where uh, series element and shunt element are connected here. So, the input uh, voltage is going to be V s and the output voltage is V r receiving end voltage. So, you can observe that the since the capacitor is uh, open circuited. Uh, since the capacitor is uh, since the output side is going to be lightly loaded or open circuited. So, the voltage V r is going to be greater than V s this condition is called as receiving end voltage is greater than the V s because of the capacitor acts like a uh, because it uh, starts generating uh, more reactive power and that reactive power injects or generates more high current and that high current is uh, injected into the system when the high current is flowing through the network or into the transmission line there will be a generation of over voltage. So, that V r is greater than V s you can see in the phasor diagram that the O e phase r is greater than V s. So, what is V s? V s plus x, x 1 c 1 plus r 1 c 1 gives the V r. So, V r is greater than V s. V s is simply V s plus the two phasor add the two phasors plus V s that is nothing but my V r. So, what we observe from this diagram is your O e phase r is greater than O g. So, that is the receiving end voltage is greater than sending end voltage because of the open ended line. So, capacitor automatically uh, act as a source because already it is energy storing element uh, which stores the energy and that uh, starts uh, generating more reactive power and in turn it generates more current and that high current which is circulated into the network and when it is circulated automatically there will be a generation of 
uh, over voltage uh, which is going to be on receiving end side. So, the sending end side becomes automatically reduced. So, this is this has to be uh, quenchified or it has to be suppressed. Uh, how to do that by connecting one inductor. So, that excess energy is going to be absorbed by that way we can maintain the balance into the uh, system. So, this uh, slide explains uh, the tap changing operations because suppose if we want to change the voltage uh, for any applications, uh, we will be in a situation to uh, vary the taps. Uh, taps means we want to increase the number of the taps represents the increasing in voltage. Maybe on the taps can be provided on the primary side or on the secondary side. So, here this is called offload tap changer, offload means uh, the taps are cha changed when the supply is cut out. Uh, offload, uh, offload means uh, we say uh, this is offload on the with a few times this is LV side and HV side that is LV side and HV side with uh, uh, both sides that is on the A side and B side you can control with the two switches S1 and this is with only one single switch that you can control with S1 and S2. So, basically we have two types one is offload and onload type of. So, while for your applications for our applications we basically uh, want to increase the input voltage uh, what happens we basically vary the uh, taps. So, during such operations there will be a generation of over voltage uh, of power frequency is going to be uh, generated. So, that uh, this, is, this, is, this is also a one of uh, and frequent uh, causes for generation of temporary over voltage into the systems. So, next we have come to a very important uh, topic uh, on the, the control uh, or measures or mitigate of uh, uh, the problems uh, say the over voltages. Uh, it can it could be of uh, the uh, switching over voltages or a temporary over voltages. So, what are the common methods quite common methods which we can imply or apply for the system. Uh, we will see the first method is uh, one step or multi step energization of uh, the um, say the circuit breakers uh, with the help of the resistors. Uh, and then so the second one is phase controlled uh, operations. So, phase controlled operations in circuit using in circuit breakers uh, with the proper sensors. So, third method is going to be the uh, drainage of trapped charges that is you are going to draining of the charges already which is stored once the supply is off once the system is not put in operation already there will be some storage of charges that charges has to be trapped off otherwise or else what happens is it will be protained or persisted into the system and uh, while put in operation this will be added up and gives a jerk or a initial uh, uh, increase in the voltage. Uh, so, along with the system voltage. So, uh, that has to be trapped off before any any power system operation. So, that is called draining and uh, for third uh, fourth one is going to be the uh, the limiting of uh, these uh, over voltages with the help of proper shunt reactors uh, or we call it as a surge arrestors. Uh, this uh, type of uh, uh, the control measures uh, is going to be common for uh, switching it can be of switching over voltage or it could be of uh, um, temporary over voltage or it could be of an external over voltage. So, whatever may be the ways uh, the when we follow these methods we can really mitigate uh, these problems uh, to 95 percentage uh, of the things. So, the first very uh, method uh, is going to be very powerful and very simple uh, that is going to be the insertion of resistors we call it as pre insertion of resistors. So, basically uh, we have to add the additional resistance uh, in multi step or one step. So, into the circuit breaker basically circuit breaker you we have one doubt whether we have to connect the resistors in parallel or in series. But for quantifying this effect uh, we have to connect the additional resistance uh, in series with the circuit breaker contacts in one step or in multi step. So, uh, by that way suppose I am adding a x resistance and now I am closing it. So, while switching operation while uh, this is called resistance switching of circuit breaker. So, when we switch on the system uh, by that way that sudden over voltage which is initiated into the system is nullified and this resistor will act as a blockage will act as a block. Uh, or blockage or uh, element uh, to the over voltage sudden increase. So, this is a very quite uh, simple method, but these resistance has to be inserted into the network for uh, for very few seconds because it should not be prolonged operation or uh, obviously, uh, it is it leads to uh, uh, heating of the resistance and leads to uh, the malfunctioning. So, it has to be pre planned and planned accordingly uh, the duration of time to be inserted into the network. So, that is the uh, first method. 
Next method is going to be the phase controlled uh, operation of circuit breakers. So from the name it is very clear phase controlled. So instead of uh, switching uh, uh, that is closing the all the phases at a time, uh, we can close one by one. So that is F phase, first we are going to control F one, every one phase at a time by that way the over voltage is going to be reduced or minimized greatly by the phase controlled operations uh, with the proper sensors on each phases. So next method is going to be the drainage of trapped charges, this is very quite simple and the, the, the charges already which is stored in the energy storing elements of uh, in the transmission system is going to be uh, absorbed by the shunt reactors which is going to be connected only in parallel and uh, or we can do it by uh, resistors also. So this is very uh, effective method. So this uh, picture uh, really uh, uh, clearly explains the, uh, the absorption of excess charge in the transmission system say uh, we have uh, uh, say uh, suppose we have a transmission line and uh, it is going to be a shunt reactor uh, it's, it's, it's one type of coil and which will absorb uh, the excess charge and it has to be connected in parallel. Finally I ended up with uh, the learning objective what we have learnt is going to be the uh, I think I hope that uh, uh, the everyone can able to understand uh, what is over voltage. Uh, what are the causes or generation of over voltage, how to mitigate uh, or the control methods of the over voltages uh, in a, a quite easier way. So I hope uh, you have all understood this topic and uh, find more interesting and uh, more informative. I thank, I, uh, thank you once again uh, for, uh, for, uh, for this opportunity given to me in uh, handling this uh, topic. Thank you once again.